Okay, this is about Cincinnatus, and Cincinnatus was a Roman farmer uh, back during the time of the early Republic. Uh, Cincinnatus, as you can see in this picture here, uh, uh, farmed, and uh, you know he was working his plow one day, and the story goes that the uh, Roman Senate approached Cincinnatus, and they asked him for his help in fighting the enemies of Rome. Uh, during the Republic, you had an office of authority called the Dictator. Uh, it wasn't a bad thing, necessarily. A dictator had total and absolute power. So Cincinnatus was given this total and absolute power in order to combat the enemies of Rome. And uh, he does this twice. And what's significant about the example of Cincinnatus is he takes power, he fights the enemies of Rome, and he gladly gives power back to uh, the Roman Senate, and he returns to his plow. So here's another image of Cincinnatus uh, working the fields on his farm. Uh, and here are the, uh, the Roman government type people approaching him. And they're about to ask him to go and uh, stop his life so he can defend Rome. Here is a statue that some of you may have seen before. It is Cincinnatus being shown uh, with a plow behind him. Here you can see. And he's holding something in his hand called the fosses. A fosses was a symbol of Roman authority. <clears throat> kind of like a badge would be today for a police officer. Some kind of identifying symbol of authority. So back in the uh, Roman times, if you were given the fosses, it was a symbol of total and absolute power. So here's another image of Cincinnatus working the plow, or, being, or stopping at the plow, and being approached by the government officials. <clears throat> here are some images uh, about fosses, so back to the fosses. So here it is. It's a bundle of rods, wooden rods, with an axe tied in the middle uh, or at the end. Um, and then you can see here in the American United States uh, Congress, on either side of the speaker's podium, you have a fosses. Uh, this is an old dime that was in circulation in the uh, earlier part of the 20th century. You can see there are fosses uh, on the uh, American dime. Uh, and you can see E Pluribus Unum again out of many one. So, uh, and then another image with the uh, two fascist dictators, Benito Mussolini and Adolf Hitler, of course, and you could see that there is a fosses here. So obviously we get the word fascist from this uh, object called the fosses uh, in ancient, uh, from ancient Rome. Okay, here's Abraham Lincoln, another example of the fosses. You can see underneath his hand at the Lincoln Memorial. You have two fosses. So the word fascist has negative connotations in our vocabulary. Uh, I'm not suggesting that Abraham Lincoln was a fascist per se, uh, but the symbol of Roman uh, authority, the fosses itself, uh, can be seen throughout our own uh, architecture and art, uh, especially from the early part of our nation's um, growth and development. Uh, the art that was popular at the time was called neoclassical or neoclassicism. So neo meaning new, classical referring to Greek and Roman. Our founding fathers were immersed in uh, Greco-Roman thought and philosophy, and this is what they uh, model our government after with the Greeks and Romans in mind. So Cincinnati, you can see in this image here, uh, it's got the statue of Cincinnati, which is up in Cincinnati, Ohio. And then you have uh, George Washington uh, with a kind of a, it looks like a column, but it's almost like a fosses, like big column. Uh, and then you have another depiction of Washington uh, in a toga uh, and a shirt off in a Roman fashion, Roman, Greco-Roman fashion. Uh, George Washington was called the American Cincinnati because he... Uh, he was given total and absolute power twice, right? He was elected president twice, unanimously. He got every vote both times. And uh, instead of running for a third term or making himself king, which was suggested, uh, he declined and he returned to Mount Vernon. I mean, we can go back even further. 
During the American Revolution, he was the commanding general of all military forces. He was very popular, very efficient. Uh, he could have taken over by force because he had the loyalty of uh, military officers, but he declined famously at an event called the Newburgh Conspiracy. He declined to take power by force then, went back to Mount Vernon. Uh, when the Constitutional Convention was going on, he was approached to be the president of the Constitutional Convention because only he had the respect of everybody from all the bickering sides about uh, how this new constitution should be developed. So they could all agree upon one thing, that Washington should be their leader. So after the Constitutional Convention, Washington goes back to Mount Vernon, uh, his home, his farm, and uh, then he's again approached again to be president. And so he's elected twice, as I already mentioned. There was no amendment to the Constitution at the time saying that he couldn't be president for a third time, a uh, third term, uh, but he declined and he went back to the farm just like Cincinnati. So Washington is called the American Cincinnati. And uh, you can see the title of this book kind of refers to that. Here's a great image of uh, reenactors, Roman reenactors, in probably modern day Rome or uh, somewhere in Italy. And they're walking down the street in their Roman uh, legionnaires' garb. Uh, and they have a replica of a fasces, again, a Roman symbol of authority, right? 